So let's continue our discussion on the isoelectric points of proteins. Previously, we had example one and example two in which we actually determined what the isoelectric point of a protein was. Now let's look at example three. So in example three, we want to basically determine the net charge on this protein that consists of five amino acids at these four different pH values. So let's begin by actually drawing the structure of this protein. So let's begin with histidine. So we have our, actually, we're not going to have enough room. So let's draw it lower. Uh, we have H3N and we have our central carbon atom. The H is going into the board and we have our group for histidine. It basically looks something like this. Uh, okay, we have a double bond here. We have a double bond here. We have an H here and we have that. Let's finish off the first amino acid with this carbonyl group. Now let's move on to tyrosine. For tyrosine, we have a different side chain group, right? So the side chain group for tyrosine is, is a phenyl group. So we have our benzene, and then we have an OH, and this is an H. And let's finish off amino acid number two. Now we're at lysine. So let's draw our N atom, then we have our H going into the board, and for lysine, the side chain group is H, is four of these carbon atoms. And then at the end of that, we have this amine group. And then we finish off that amino acid for glutamate. So we have our nitrogen. So for glutamate, it looks like this. So let's remove that second bond and let's draw the resident stabilized form of this group. And then we have finally cysteine. So, so we have the nitrogen, then we have our central carbon, we have this H going into the board and for cysteine the group, the side chain group is, we have this CH2 group and then we have the sulfur that is bound to our H. And now we finish off this uh, peptide by drawing the terminal alpha carboxyl group. So, okay, so this is our five amino acid peptide. So amino acid one, two, amino acid three, four, and five. Now the next step is to basically label all the groups on the peptide that can lose or gain an H atom and we have to also label their pKa values. So let's begin on this side. So this right over here has a pKa value of 8.0. So let's underline that. Uh, this group here, or let's actually go to this group, uh, this group here, which is our histidine, so this nitrogen, right, can gain or lose an H atom at a pKa of 6.0, okay? Now let's go to tyrosine. For tyrosine, the pKa value is about 10.9, okay? Uh, for this one, which is lysine, the pKa value is 10.8, so slightly below that for tyrosine. For glutamate, the pKa value is 4.1 and for this final one, which is, what is it, it's cysteine, the pKa value is 8.3 and then for this N group, it's the pKa value is 3.1. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pKa values that we have to consider in steps or in uh, A, B, C, and D. So let's begin with A, okay? So at a pH of two, what is the net charge on this protein? 
So let's begin with this group and basically go one by one all the way to the seventh group, this alpha carboxyl group. So at the alpha amino group, we're at pH of two. And since two is below 8.0, that means this will have a positive charge. So once again, remember that what the pKa value tells us is, so if the pH is equal to the pKa, that is when our H atom will be lost or gained. And in this particular case, at a pH of eight or higher, this is when the H atom on this nitrogen will be lost. So our <coughs> first charge is a positive one charge. Now let's move on to the second group, this group here. This is histidine, and for histidine, the pKa is 6.8, and that means below a pKa of 6.8, this nitrogen will be protonated. And, with, and when this nitrogen is protonated, we basically have a positive charge on that nitrogen. So one, two, three, four uh, bonds, and so this will have a positive charge. So we'll have a positive charge on that chain. Let's move on to the next amino acid. This is tyrosine. For tyrosine, the pKa value is 10.8. So below 10.8, below a pH of 10.8, this will be protonated and so it will have a charge of zero. So let's say neutral charge or actually, yeah, let's say neutral charge. Um, okay, so let's move on to this third amino acid. So we have lysine and lysine has a pK of 10.8, which is above a pH of two. So that means this will have a positive charge on that nitrogen, right? So the nitrogen is bound to one, two, three, four atoms. It will have a positive one charge. Let's move on to this one here, which is glutamate. Glutamate has a 4.1 value. So what that means is above 4.1, the oxygen will be deprotonated, but below 4.1, the oxygen will be protonated. And when the oxygen is protonated, it has a charge of zero. Let's move on to the final amino acid, this cysteine. The cysteine has a pKa of 8.3 and below 8.3, this will be protonated and so it will not have a charge. So we have a charge of zero. And finally, last but not least, this alpha carboxyl group that has a pKa value of 3.1. So what this means is, below a pH of 3.1, this group will be protonated. And so this will have a charge of zero. So we have one, two, three positive charges, no negative charges, and that means that the total charge for this particular case will be positive three. Let's move on to B. In B, we're bumping up the pH to five. So now things will change. Okay, so let's begin with at the beginning where at a pH of five, which is below eight, so that means this here is protonated. So let's, this one is protonated. Then we move on to histidine, so where five, which is once again below a pK of six, so histidine will also be protonated and this nitrogen will have a positive charge. Let's move on to the third one, tyrosine. So five is below 10.9, so that means this will exist in its neutral form. We're going to have a charge of zero for that particular case. Let's move on to the fourth amino acid. So we have one, two, three, or one, two, three. Uh, yeah, so three. So lysine contains a uh, pKa of 10.8 on that side chain group. And so we're at five, which is below 10.8. So this will have a positive charge on that nitrogen. Uh, let's move on to the next one. So we're at glutamate. For glutamate, the pKa is 4.1. And since five is above 4.1, that means this oxygen will have lost that H atom. And so it will have a negative charge. So finally, we have at least one negative charge on our peptide. Let's move on to the next one, cysteine. So for cysteine, the pKa is 8.3, which is uh, above the pH of five, and so that means this will have a net charge of zero. And for this particular case, because we're at a pH of five, which is above this, this will also have lost that 
H atom, and so it will have a negative charge. So we have two negative charges, and we have three positive charges. So three positive charges and two negative charges gives us an overall net charge of negative or positive one. So we still have a positive charge, uh, but it's a smaller positive charge. Let's move on to a neutral pH of 7, which is the physiological pH of our body. So let's continue the process. So in this particular case, we're still below a pH of 8, so that means this will have a positive charge. So let's move on to the side chain group of that amino acid number 1. We see that we have our histidine and so this at a pH of 6 or above will begin to lose that H atom and, and since we're at a pH of 7 what that means is this will have lost the H atom it will have a neutral charge and so now we have a charge of 0 for the second case uh, for that first side chain group. Now the second side chain group and the second amino acid is tyrosine and so we have a pKa of 10.9 which is above 7 and so what that means this will have a neutral charge just like in the other two cases. Let's move on to the third amino acid so this one here lysine pKa of 10.8 uh, which is above 7 that means it will have a charge of positive 1 on that nitrogen we move on to the next amino acid in line, which is glutamate, has a pKa of 4.1, which is below our neutral pH of 7, so this will bear a negative charge on the oxygens here. So we have a negative charge here. On the next one, we have uh, cysteine, and so for cysteine, we have a pKa of 8.3 above 7, and so what that means is this will be neutral. And finally, this N group will be negatively charged because the pKa of this is below the, pK, uh, the pH of 7. So we have a negative charge. And finally, if we add these charges up, we'll see that our charge, the net charge in this particular case is zero. And so this can basically be used to find what the actual pi value of this protein is. And we'll do that in just a moment. Uh, so actually, let's add E, where in E we want to find the pi. Okay, and in D, so we follow these same procedures, we basically have in the beginning because our pH is 11, now this will have lost the H atom, and so now we have a neutral charge there. This has lost that atom, the H atom, and so it has a neutral charge on the nitrogen. For this particular case, 11 is above 10.9, so this lost that H atom and so we have a negative charge because once that oxygen loses our H atom it gains a negative charge. For this one 10.8 so that means the nitrogen lost that H atom and it is neutralized so it gains a charge or it has the nitrogen has a charge of zero because one of the H atoms is lost. For glutamate where once again above 4.1 so this will have a charge of negative uh, one and then for this side chain group we're above 8.3 we're at 11 and so that means we have a charge of negative one and for the final group we see that we have this uh, we have the terminal carbonyl group so this uh, that will have a negative charge as well because 11 is above the pKa of this side chain group and so if we sum up these charges one two three four negative charges and so that means we have a full charge or a not a full charge but a net charge of negative four okay so out of all these cases, C is the only one that can be used to find our PI value. Remember, to find the isoelectric point, the PI, we want to estimate the pH at which the net charge on the protein would be zero, which is choice C. So now we want to use this pH of 7 to basically find what the average of the two pK values is above and directly below the pH of 7. So we have 8 
10.9, we have 4.1, 3.1, 8.3, 10.8, and 6.0. So what is the value, what is the pKa that is directly above this value of 7? So we have 8, we have 10.9, 10.8, 8.3 are all the values directly above it, and 8 is the closest one to 7. So that means we basically use 8 as one of those values, and then the one directly below it, we have 3.1, 4.1, and 6.0. So we use this 6.0 value, and so if we add up these two and take the average, we see that the PI is in fact at seven. So for this particular case, for these particular conditions, when these are the pKa values of this protein, we see that the pI is seven. It's the neutral physiological pH of our body. So this is how you find the pI diisoelectric point of proteins.